Hello and welcome to my first video on YouTube on my automotive YouTube channel. Now uh, today I will be doing a automotive repair on a BMW E46. Uh, now the repair that I'm going to be doing is on the M43 engine which includes the oil filter housing gasket. Now these are quite common and I don't really see many videos on it so I thought I should probably do one. Now with this video it's not the best and for most of my videos they ain't going to be exactly the best videos around because of being in a residential area and I'm using my, U <laughs> my YouTube phone <laughs> my mobile phone to record my videos and it's kinda hard to like talk and not look like a freak in the area and hold my phone while I'm doing repairs so I'm sorry it's not gonna be the best for the start of my new career on YouTube but I will do my best so, welcome to my new YouTube channel, Jono's Auto Repair. My name's Jonathan, and uh, let's get into it. Okay, so before we get started on this repair, I am going to be stating a disclaimer here. So, if you're doing any repairs on your vehicle following my procedures, I am not responsible for any damages you may cause during the repair. So, please do not come back to me and start giving me excuses and whatnot, because... <sighs> If you're unsure about working on your vehicle or have no experience at all, I strongly suggest you should get a mechanic or a technician to work on your car because I would I would hate it for you to damage anything on your vehicle. But if you do the steps right, you shouldn't. But this is just a disclaimer, do not blame me for any damages you may cause. So uh, let's get into it. So here we are in my BMW E46 318Ci with the 1.9 engine and uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to start the engine and uh, do excuse me here I have to tap the key because the key is not exactly the best. So here we go it's running and like I said I'm recording with my phone so it doesn't sound exactly good. So uh, let's go take a look at this oil leak. I'm doing my voiceovers after recording because I don't look, look like a freak. So um, you can see the oil on the tray which we'll clean up later. I'm not sure if you can see but there is the leak. As you can see I'm pointing where it's leaking all over the place. If we have a look underneath you can see it as well. And it starts to drip onto the ground. You can also see it on the engine as well because as it's driving all the wind goes underneath and blows it all back. So uh, yeah. <laughs> But it's been leaking quite a lot of oil surprisingly so uh, first thing you want to do is disconnect the battery because you're working on the engine and you're disconnecting electrical parts you can just disconnect the negative but get rid of the both and pull the battery out and of course don't leave your keys in a boot okay so what we're going to need to do is remove some parts from here which is the belts the air box the air filter um, mass flow thing cruise control and the oil filter housing and the alternate. Okay, so we're now going to disconnect some sensors and I will advise take photos of where they go or tape them and write on the tape. So as you can see I've just shown you where they go and this part here, the clip, you're supposed to press on it but on this one it's actually broken so I could just simply pull it out as seen here and there's also going to be a hose that you're going to need to pull so we'll just move that to the side and there is a hose oh sorry <laughs> it's, it's after, don't forget I'm recording after let's take the mass airflow thing off I 
don't know why I did it in this order. <laughs> okay. Now we've got the hose. Right, there we go. That was a major cock up. <laughs> Okay, so let's get the uh, air box out. You will need to remove the cr cruise control, I forgot to record that part. And just simply pull it out and pull it to the side. Now when I fitted this engine, I did break some bolts, nuts on this, so there's only two on this one for some reason. I forgot to weld, but we're going to need to take the belts off as well. Also makes it a lot easier. As you can see, I struggled here because of using one hand. Let's just pull the belt off to one side. You are supposed to replace these belts, but these weren't very old, so I put them back on. But also, always check your belts. For any splits, tears, anything like that. Okay, so we're going to remove them next. I use a long socket on this one. It was a 10 mil, if I remember correctly. You don't need to take the middle one out so much. You only undo it a little bit because you can just literally unhook it. But there are two nuts here. And I would advise you spray them with WD-40 or any oil. Just to uh, lubricate it. Easier to remove. Okay, so let's unhook it and just simply pull it down to the one side this is easier access as well so we're going to need to remove the alternator so there are two connections on the back and also the oil filter I struggled here as well you'll see me bashing my hands in a minute but all you do is simply just open the cap and all the oil will actually drain to the bottom and it's less mess for you okay so let's start draining the oil from the um, oil filter housing and this is so that all the oil goes out so it's less mess for you towards the end now I know my video seems to be a fail at the moment but trust me if you carry on watching it will help you Also, now's the perfect time to do an oil change when you uh, replace the gasket. An oil filter change, obviously. So you'll probably hear it gurgle in a minute. As you can see, it's actually going down. So it's less mess for you. And of course, I didn't exactly have another hand to be able to catch that oil that I just dripped and there's the gurgle okay so now you can just stick that back in and start undoing the alternator as you can see the brackets broken on this one I didn't find out until the last time I took it off because I did do this repair once before but it wasn't exactly a repair it was a bodge because I needed the car and yeah <laughs> I should have done it properly there and then and I wouldn't have had to do it now but I suppose it does benefit me and others so as you can see I disconnected the connector on the back and there's also going to be another connector which is a 14mm socket I think it was and that's what I'm undoing now Excuse the background noise, as I said, I'm in a residential area. Alright, just move that to the side. 
and I can eventually get it out. There we go, just lift the alternator out and do take care of it. Now is also the perfect time to check the bearings. All you do is spin the pulley on it and listen for noises. This one I know is fine for a fact. Okay, so we're going to now be removing the gasket, of course. But first, we've got to move the uh, belt tensioner, which are these bolts, which I think it was a 14. No, it wasn't 14. I think it was a 15 mil. I can't remember now. And there's also one more there. Okay, so we're now going to be removing the belt tensioner. As you can see, all the bolts are now undone. And you can just simply lift it and move it to the one side. I would advise you to take all these bolts out in order and keep it to the one side. Also remove that one as well. So you can just lift it. And as you can see, there is one bolt missing from the oil fil filter housing. Sorry. As I said, it was a bodge job and I may have lost one of the bolts, which I did find. Don't worry. Okay, so now I have undone all the bolts from the oil filter housing and you can just simply lift them out. And I would advise you to get a tray under the engine when you remove this, just in case there is oil still sitting there. Excuse what she said in the background. <laughs> But um, if you can't pull it off, simply use a rubber mallet. Do not use anything else, but gently tap it so you don't damage the housing. Mine just simply just had to wiggle it. But yeah, I'm doing it proper this time. I'm not doing a bodge. And there's also a connector there I forgot to mention. But just simply don't do that, of course. Yeah, definitely don't do that. I couldn't help myself. But as you can see, it's a total mess because I did do a bodge job. And we're going to, of course, clean all that off. But it did seal, it did seal for a little while and then ended up. And plus, this was a cheap gasket that was on it anyway. And I did a major mess of it. I'm not going to make an excuse and say, oh, it was there before I had it. <laughs> it's pointless. Anyway, so surprisingly the oil leaks is actually caused by the return valve, which is the little black uh, thing that I removed up at the top, which I'll show you in a moment. There's actually oil rings, uh, not oil rings, o-rings, sorry, which I didn't see at first, and I found out you actually had to replace them. So we will be sorting that out. So in this part of the video I was actually doing a clean up, I was cleaning up the oil tray, not oil tray sorry, the sump tray even, to protect it. And I was cleaning up the area around here. Now the best thing to clean it with is actually brake and clutch cleaner. Unfortunately I didn't have any so I had to find a solution. But here you can see the o-rings that are flat and they're actually the reason why it um leaks surprisingly but of course oil and uh, not oil rubber perishes after time so it's expected so I did a little clean up it wasn't the best because I didn't have a uh, brake and clutch cleaner but it got most of it off and what I used which end of the day it's gonna get dirty under here but usually I would have it completely clean 
So here you can see I've got the new O-rings on the actual valve and you can see the old O-rings which had pretty much snapped and crumbled as soon as you touch them basically. But as you can see they're on and they just simply pop into the engine block which I will show in a moment. It should be a nice click not just slide in and out. And then. So after cleaning up the services it's now time to actually apply the sealant on the services and of course let it dry for a little bit but do uh, read the package anyway and try to make sure there's no breaks but you should do it on both services make sure the valves in properly and there's your old o-rings they literally just now it's time to actually put on your gasket and also make sure it's on right and press down and then just simply finger tight all the bolts in the oil filter housing now it's time to make sure everything's on tight and make sure to check your workshop manual just in case there's torque settings or just don't over tighten it and of course reconnect everything now people say open the oil filter cap and just fill it with oil what's the point in that because once you start the engine up all the oil goes up eventually anyway within like the first couple of cranks if you start putting oil in it'll just go straight down to the bottom <laughs> it's pointless so uh, there we go and of course you can take the sealant off now it's putting everything back together now you can start putting all the things back together in reverse order of how you took it off and then you can simply check for leaks when you run it now what I should have done is actually disconnect the fuel system or the ignition system so it doesn't actually fire up and just let it crank over a couple of times but I didn't I wasn't thinking that day so as you can see when I fire it up the actual the sorry the red oil light came on for a couple of seconds but then it eventually went off because all the oil was actually in the filter by then so what you now can do is have it run for a little while let it get up to operating temperature and start checking for leaks and in this case there was no leaks the only oil that was on the car was what I missed on cleaning it up but as you can see I was checking behind as much as I could with the camera there's no oil there either which is a good sign also checked underneath the car there was nothing which is also a good sign and I also did a test on the alternator to make sure the alternator was actually at the right voltage which you can do from the inside of the car or if you have an alternate an alternator the um, a multimeter you can actually find out it should be roughly around 14 volts and this one was pretty close if not better yep there we go while it was warming up then it eventually goes around to about 13.9 which is alright for this car also testing my lights to make sure they were working I was probably shown off here because I had white bulbs I love my new bulbs but still no leaks look at them sexy bulbs Now 20 days after the, doing this repair I've been driving the car around, I've done around 120 miles so far and in fact no 130 I think but 
there's no leak still which is a good sign and it's pretty much a job done so one thing I should mention is you should always have your safety make sure you do it right and don't try and bodge it like I did in the first place and I wasn't even gonna make an excuse saying I didn't do it or anything because I know I did and I'm only being honest so um, yeah <laughs> I should have done it right the first time but I suppose it's benefited me right now because I can make a video so anyway the parts that I use were genuine BMW all you do is actually phone up the parts department and there you go and uh, there we go the car's done so I apologize that this video ain't exactly the best but it will do for now because it's the start of YouTube for me <laughs> well a fresh start so uh, hopefully you guys will uh, like and comment and subscribe for future videos see you soon